If you're currently running Google search campaigns and you can't get any conversions or increase the number of sales that your business needs through its Google Ads campaigns, don't stress at all because in this video, I'm gonna be taking you through how you can optimize your current or new Google Ads search campaigns. And this optimization process still works even though Google has changed the way that its match types work inside of Google. And it also works in this new world where Google is pushing AI Max harder than a TikTok influencer is pushing the latest bottle of Miracle Water. Now it is important to note that when it comes to search campaigns inside of Google Ads, there's really four key areas or four focus areas that you can use to optimize your search campaigns. And this is a method which I called my STAB method. And it really breaks down these four core areas that you can use for optimization. The first one is S, which is your spending and your segmentation, which is really controlling where Google is spending the money inside of your Google Ads campaigns. Then there's your targeting, which covers not only your keyword targeting, but also your audience, location, and device targeting. We've then also got the A, which is for your ads and your landing pages, because remember, for success with Google Ads, it's not only what is happening inside of your Google Ads account, but you also need to make sure you're across what happens when people are on your landing page, because if your landing page doesn't convert, your Google Ads is not gonna convert. And then finally, the B, in the STAB method stands for bidding, which is all about your smart bidding strategies, which you can use inside of Google Ads. Now, because I want this video to be as practical as possible, we're gonna jump into a screen share, where I'm gonna show you how we've gone through and optimized a real Google search campaign for a real business over the past 12 months. But apart from this video being as practical as possible, I do also wanna help you and your business with your Google Ads accounts. Regardless of where you're currently at with Google Ads and your business, at Define Digital Academy, we're committed to helping you to increase the performance of your Google Ads campaign and we do this in various ways, all the way from courses to communities, all the way up to some boutique coaching options that we've just recently relaunched. And if you wanna see how we can best help you and your business, if you follow the link in the description below, you can see a really, really short survey, it takes no more than 90 seconds to complete. And that allows us to know the best way that we can help you and we'll be back in contact with you. But with all of that said, let's jump into a screen share so I can take you through the process of optimizing your Google search campaigns. Let's go. So what I wanna show you in through here, this is a search campaign and we're looking at data for the last 12 months or 13 months. So from June 24 to 25, I wanna show you in through here that we've taken this conversion rate. We're looking at monthly breakdown points in here. So June last year was at 10.28 and June this year, we've got it just below that 15%, 14.67, it did peak up at that 15 and a half. And we've also been able to drive down that cost per conversion, taking it down from $48. And now we're getting it consistently in those 40 to 38 to $42. And we've also been able to bump up their impression share. So what I wanna take you in through here is how we've gone through and the changes that we have made. Now, when it comes into the optimization method and this stab method, if you go down into the description of this video, you can actually get access to this Google Ads optimization check List, which takes you through all of these different options. You can see how we've laid it out here. We've got spending and segmentation, the targeting options, ads and landing pages and bidding. While we're talking about search, we've also got this for search, the shopping performance maxed, margin display and video, but we are focusing on search. So let's dive straight into it. Let's start on this spending and segmentation. Now, what I wanna show you in through here is that you saw the results that we showed you, which ones these ones in here for our search campaigns. But what I wanna show you in behind here is what we actually did is that Leading back into this section before you start to see this search impression jump up, we're actually running one nationwide search campaign. This was for a business based in the United States. And what we ended up doing from here is that we actually broke it out into a collection of different location-based or state-based search campaigns. I've had to hide out these names just for client privacy. But what I wanna show you in through here is this core element. The reason why we did this, and when it comes to spending and segmentation, one of the core things that you wanna do is that if you see that Google is not spending in certain areas and you see that you've got better conversion results or some better results, that's a great way of segmenting in your account. Now, I wanna show you in an example in through here. These campaigns that we've got running down the bottom that have selected, these are all state-based campaigns. So they're just, just targeting individual 
individual states within the United States. This one has only spent that $910, but that's already getting us up to a search impression share of 18%. Whereas this one, which was a larger state in the California, these four here are actually the four largest states inside of California. This is a smaller state. And you can see here that we haven't needed as much spend to get an actual higher search impression share. And what this has allowed us to do is we saw that we were getting some really good conversion metrics, but we just weren't able to force enough spend when it was sitting inside of the one search campaign to really push that through. There is a fine balance here. As I do see some businesses make a mistake that they add too much segmentation. So you need to make sure you get this right. That's why we haven't broken this out into 50 different campaigns for all the 50 states in America. So we really, really put some different rationale in it. And as you can see, we've just started to break out some extra campaigns. So you can do this in a staggered approach, but what you're wanting to achieve here is that if you see that there's some constant states where you're getting really, really good metrics, but you're just not getting that spend, you can break it out. The other thing that you can do as well is what I want to show you in through here is that this has allowed us to change out the bidding strategies by the different states. And you can actually see in through here, we've got quite a range of our CPC. So you can see this one in here is at $6.31. This one's at $8.67. So that way, once again, it just allows us that greater targeting and flexibility across the different states. All right. Now what I want to show you in through here is let's more move into a targeting option. Now I'm not going to go through every single line because you know there's a lot of lines here. But when it comes to targeting, one of the main options, especially for a search campaign, it really comes down to your keyword targeting. Now it's not only keyword targeting because you've got to also look at your, your audience targeting, your location targeting. But with our keyword targeting, what we did in this one, once again, we've had to blur out these keywords, but I will let you know that these are broad match keywords. You've got two options when it comes to really targeting your search campaigns. You can either do what we've done in this case where we're using broad match keywords, and then we've built out quite an aggressive list of negative keywords. Let me just explain why this works for this business. This business is in a, an accreditation business, so they're offering accreditations for specific services. So there's a lot of searches which occur, which are all about other certificates which they can't give certification for. So it really, really makes sense for us to go really, really specific on the keywords that we're looking at. Then we've built out a negative keyword list that really, really blocks out non-relative searches. Now, you could go the other way. You could go with exact match keywords that are really, really specific with only a few negative keywords, but we've just found this way for us. We got better CPC rates. Now, as I'm saying, you can go either way and either one works, but one thing you do really want to make sure is that you do want to make sure that you're not adding too many negative keywords. For the majority of businesses, you won't need this level of a negative keyword list, but it works for this business because they're in a very, very niche space. But that's the setting that we've got there, just a couple of broad match keywords, but then we add in the targeting via negative keywords. The other thing I would add is one thing I do want to show you in through here is that what we have found as well is that as we've gone through, we did have two main keyword themes in this campaign and then we had some different state-based ad groups. But because of Google changing the keyword targeting around to a meaning-based keyword targeting, what we found is that we were able to merge these ad groups into one. In this main campaign, which is spending you know quite a lot of money, you can see here over the last 12 months, it's spent coming up close to $200,000. There's only one campaign with one ad group. So don't think that you need a really, really highly segmented campaign, especially with Google's broad match keyword targeting. If you're using that, it's all about the relevancy and just really making sure that user search terms is relevant to the ad copy and relevant to the landing page. When it comes to the ads, what we have done, and I want to show you in through here, is that at the moment, we are still doing split testing. We've got two ads active at the moment. Now, eventually this won't be required. And the reason for that is because Google is eventually going to be giving this data at a ad asset level. It has hasn't come in yet. So that's why we're still recommending that you do run ad copy split tests. And the reason for why we've done this is for you, I can show you in through here over the past 12 months. You can see from here, we've had ads that are converting at 6.86%, another one at 10.8, but we've been able to push up some different combinations and get this up at about 11% and also 12.5%. This current ad copy test is, we've only just started it because this one's only got 1,700 clicks. In another 30 days, we'll review that and then see if we can drive those conversion rates up even higher. Also have a look in through here, this cost per conversion of this ad. We learned that this one really, really quickly wasn't working over 153 clicks. Its cost per conversion was just way too high at 89 or the others below 60. We're really, really pushing this one to try and get it below 50. But you can see through here that this ad copy and running proper ad copy split test is still a really, really powerful way in 2025 that you can increase your performance. Now, the last thing that I want to show you in through here, so I've taken you through an option of how you can increase your spending and segmentation, how you can optimize through targeting and how you can optimize through your ads. Now, let's talk about optimizing through
through your bidding. And one thing I wanna show you in through here is that you can see over the past 13 months, we've only made one change inside of our bidding target. And that was across the two ad groups. One of these ad groups is now paused. We increased that target CPA from 55 to 60. And that's where we really, really got a really good balance between the two. Obviously on top of that, we have then also gone through and split out some different campaigns, which has really meant that this smart bidding strategy is really stable inside of this campaign. One thing I really, really wanna note in through here is one of the biggest mistakes we see inside of Google Ads is people changing their bidding strategies far too often. And what I wanna remind you is that when it comes to your bidding strategies, every time you make a change into your bidding strategy, so you might be adding maximize conversions or maximize conversion value, or you might be altering your target CPA or your target ROAS, is that is a really, really significant change. And in most cases, it will put your campaign into a new landing phase. The other thing you need to remember is that when it comes to adding in bidding strategy, one of the main things that it's looking at doing is balancing out your budget to try and get the most conversions or achieve your target that you've set. And the way that Google uses its budget is that yes, Google is a daily budget where you enter in how much you wanna spend per day. That daily budget is then times by 30.4 and it's balanced out to a monthly ad spend. And that's the big thing you need to remember with your bidding strategies is once you introduce that bidding strategy, it can take two weeks to really take effect. And in some cases, you'll see your results actually drop for the first one or two weeks before they get better. So the main thing that I would say when it comes to your bidding strategies is just to go slow and not to rush those changes. Now, because that is such a big topic, very, very soon I'm gonna show you where you can watch a full video about bidding strategies because there's actually a step-by-step -step process that we go through. But before I show you that, I did just wanna remind you, remembering with your search campaigns is the goal here with your search campaigns is to remember the user journey. What I mean by that is the search campaign is still one of those campaigns where people are completing a search, they're seeing an ad, and then you're going to your landing pages. So what you wanna make sure is that the landing page and the ad copy is relevant to the user's initial search. And that's the biggest mistake that I do often see. People don't have that really, really streamed line journey. Then remembering that you don't wanna get that sale in the ad, the goal of the ad is to get them to click to go to your landing page. You're not trying to get them to sell as soon as they hit your landing page. You want them to engage them, build up that pain level, build up that desire, and then complete that sales process. So thank you for joining me. My name is Aaron Young from Define Digital Academy. And remember, if you do need some extra help with your Google Ads campaigns, follow that link in the description so you can fill out our how can we help you questionnaire. Also, as promised, if you'd like to learn more about Google Ads bidding strategies and how to get them right in 2025, I want you to go through and watch this video right here. See you next time.